Good morning, internets. It is a hot, humid, beautiful day in sunny Florida. This is my new to me 1988 John Deere 316. I've titled this video a low hour barn find, and you're going to find out just exactly what I mean. To uh, hit on the barn find aspect, living in Florida, there's obviously some rural areas. I live in a more urban slash rural area. Uh, so barns are not, uh, they're in short supply, I'd say, to be fair. Um, however, this machine has been sitting for uh, quite some time, so it really is a barn find. Uh, it's not in the typical derelict shape, I'd say, a barn find would be in, but it has been sitting for several years, unattended, uh, unwanted, I would say. Um, so, and then we're going to get out get into exactly just how low hour this machine is but uh, first first of all uh, again it's a 1988 machine let me show you the uh, serial number X595 uh, indicates 1988 and beyond um, this machine is in excellent condition uh, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about um, if you're looking at a tractor and you're wanting to know uh, if it's ever been restored or uh, mo modified or painted or anything like that, I'm going to go ahead and talk about how you can tell, uh, and particularly this machine and how I'm going to tell. Um, I purchased this uh, tractor from uh, a very sweet, kind lady in Sarasota, Florida, which is about two hours south of my location, two hours each way. Um, it was quite a trek, uh, but totally worth it, and you're going to find out exactly why. So to get into uh, how we can tell um, the condition of this tractor and whether it's been restored or anything like that or painted. Um, so you're going to want to check the creases of the tractor. Uh, look for overspray. Uh, there is no overspray in any of the creases. Um, it looks quite original. Uh, everything is, is nice and bright. The hardware is bright. Um, usually when people paint mowers, they usually don't do anything about the hardware. Um, that's pretty typical because, you know, if it still works, it usually just doesn't get replaced. So this hardware is nice and shiny. Um, look at this dash tower. Just how shine, just how well that still shines. Look at that. You can see the reflection of the decal in it. Um, the decals are nice and straight. The spacing is perfect. The decals are exactly where they need to be. Um, this is the original seat. You can see the inscription that says John Deere. It also has the original decal uh, on the back that's, you know, a little faded from time. This is a, uh, nine, you know, this is a 29-year-old, 30-year-old machine. Um, still has the uh, uh, fender lamps in here, which uh, I found out are not apparently lit. Um, I had a 1983 John Deere 318. Uh, I believe those were lit. I may be wrong, but I believe they were. So I don't know if that's a 316 difference. Uh, another major indication is the tires. These are the original Goodyear tires. Uh, I know that from my 318 also had the original tires as well. They don't Goodyear does not make lawn tractor tires anymore. Um, to my to the best of my knowledge, they still make tractor tires for large tractors or probably compacts, but they, I don't think they make anything this small anymore. Um, everything's Carlisle. So these are the original Goodyear tires. You can still see there's a lot of tread left on the fronts. The fronts are always the first tires to wear out. Um, I, they take the most abuse. They're usually not as thick as the rears. This is all the original tires. You can see the, the back ones are has a lot of tread left on them. <clears throat> they're um, they're pretty in pretty good shape. They're a little just a little dry rotted. This tire is just a little more worn than the other one, which indicates that uh, whoever had it at the time put overinflated this tire they put too much air in this in this particular tire unfortunately um, so looking at the frame again this is a 30 year old mower the frame is shines it, it's it's it looks great um, it's the original John Deere semi gloss black so it's not gloss black it's not really shiny it's kind of a matte you know just above a matte you know a matte black um, you can see on these tractors, so this is a metal grill uh, and then a fiberglass hood. So when they touch, um, they cause a little bit of wear. So you, so we, we see the, all the typical wear spots you see on these machines. They're all there. They're all present. Um, 
So again, confirming that the age of the tractor, I mean, it, everything is matching up to what we expect. Uh, the headlight lens is is, very, is in excellent shape. No cracks or anything, no scratches that I can see. Looks like it's gonna shine up really nice when I clean out the interior of it. Um, muffler tip is still nice and black. There's some surface rust, which is very typical. Oh, another thing is to look at the um, the foot pad. This foot pad does have some wear on the on the edge there. Um, whoever had it, whoever was driving it, obviously left leaned their foot on the outside and kind of wore down the pad. But if you look over here, the foot it's in very good shape. Um, so I would expect if it had a lot of hours, you would this would be mostly you know pretty pretty decently worn down. Um, and usually, I end up replacing these just to just to make it look better. Um, looking at the fender pan, it's a little dull down here, which is typical when you wash it, you, you know, the water gathers and whatnot. Uh, looking at the, uh, condition of the paint here, look at how, how much that shines. Uh, again, matching up to our expectations that this is a, uh, low hour machine. The plastic is in excellent shape. The plastic still is very shiny. Um, look at that. That knob is, is like new. The steering wheel just needs to be clean. It's a little dirty. I haven't I haven't cleaned it. I haven't done anything to it. All I've done is leave it on the trailer since I got it back this morning. I uh, got home around 12 a.m. from Sarasota with this machine. So uh, again, we've gone over the points of the tractor that you can tell that this tractor really has not been used a whole lot. Um, I want to wait. I, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna show you the hour meter, but I want to. I'm gonna build up some, some anticipation to that. Um, the rear end looks great. Uh, it's got a uh, power flow black bracket, excuse me, and a bracket for the hydraulic tiller. Uh, with this purchase, I received a uh, 30 inch hydraulic tiller. Um, the tiller is a knot, is has some rough spots on it. Uh, mostly these pins here are quite rusted. Um, what that indicates to me uh, is that, and you can see there's, there's dirt built up on these tines and rust. Uh, in my opinion, what this means is that this tiller was left outside. I think these probably face downward into the dirt. Uh, and obviously something in the dirt and the moisture and everything is just going to eat away at that. So from what I see, including the hoses, the hoses are just falling apart. Um, this tiller was left outside, unfortunately, which, it, which is really, uh, was a really horrible thing to do to it. Uh, but the tines are still in good shape, so hopefully this thing will clean up and and be able to be used again though it obviously hasn't been used in many many years um, I'm really impressed at how heavy duty these tillers are it took a good three people to move this thing it is extremely extremely heavy and very thick um, so John Deere did very well with that moving on to uh, some of the things that I got with it this is the 46 inch mower deck I'm sorry the uh, shoots on top of that Wow. Um, it's 46 inch mower deck. So another thing when you're buying a lawnmower uh, and you're looking at how many hours the machine has on it And if somebody's telling you oh, it's very it's a low hour machine again uh, another point we can tell is uh, These are the deck gauge wheels um, Let me get up here and get a better shot So you can see it if you look closely at this wheel uh, If I feel this this is still well rounded uh, over time, these deck wheels wear down to like pretty much flat, um, and that also has to do with how high you set them and all that kind of stuff. But you can see this is still has this is still almost like a new deck wheel. It's it's obviously quite uh, faded with time and whatnot. The same thing with the roller. The roller, look at the end, still shines. The plastic still shines a little bit on the roller. The roller has very little wear. Same thing with that gauge wheel. Same thing with the backs. Um, deck shoots in good condition just needs to be repainted um, so again we're uh, we're just checking out all those all the things to uh, uh, correlate or uh, match up the hours to uh, the points on the machine that the wear points really that we can tell um, so this deck is again I mean look at look at the dirt on it so in my opinion based on the condition of the tractor compared to the condition of the deck and the tiller I think the tiller and the deck were left outside unfortunately and the tractor was obviously kept inside all these years. So, unfortunately, the uh, deck has, has taken a beating. But with uh, with the few hours that it has, I, I, I'm sure that uh, it doesn't have any serious 
uh, damage to it or anything. I haven't even looked under it uh, to see what it looks like underneath. Um, so I got the power flow bagger. There's the bagger in the bracket. And then there's the actual power flow uh, with my with my purchase. That's exactly what I got. And I'm going to tell you exactly how much I paid for it, which will, uh, which will surprise you. Okay, so back to the tractor. Um, let's go ahead and go down around to the hour meter. And uh, it's gonna it's gonna amaze you as it did as it did me. Um, again, we're checking hardware. Look at that hardware. still nice and grade a uh, grade eight, I believe it is. Uh, hardware, nice and shiny has that uh, has that gold finish to it. I haven't really I haven't taken off the panels and looked at the engine. Um, it has a uh, own in. Uh, I don't think I can see that tag very well. It has the Onan P218 uh, G. Um, that is the newer engine that was, uh, I believe, 87 and above. They put, uh, they replaced the uh, lower powered uh, Onan. Uh, they went from a 16 horsepower to an 18 horsepower. So this has the newer engine, thank goodness. I'm very fortunate for that. Again, we're looking at the hardware. It's just a little dirty, but it'll shine up. It still has a battery hold down kit. Um, everything's here. Okay, so now uh, to pretty much the main event, how many hours this machine has on it? A grand total of 250 hours. 250 hours. That's the original hour meter. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't look uh, compromised or uh, messed with or moved or anything like that. So 250 hours on a 30-year-old tractor, almost 30 years old, 29. Um, that is unbelievably low. Uh, anyone uh, with any experience in uh, tractors will, will tell you that. 250 hours on an own an engine like this is uh, essentially uh, bro just getting broken in. So um, it's practically nothing. Um, going back to the seat, uh, I mentioned I had a uh, 1983 John Deere 318 earlier, I believe. Um, the seat of that just mounted directly to this bracket and kind of just this bracket was the suspension. This has the newer seat style suspension, which is really impressive to me. Or I mean, impressive, I guess. Um, it has two bolts that it uh, pivots on and then it has a spring in the center. So it's a nicer level of suspension than my, my uh, 318 had. Um, give me more shots of the frame. I think I already did this side. Let's see, here's the front. Um, the hydraulic couplers so now that we've gone over how to tell if it uh if a tractor is uh is as low hour as somebody's saying it is which i think we've determined that here we're going to go into uh how long it's been sitting so this tractor has been sitting for several years uh these hydraulic coupler couplers are completely corroded uh they're probably going to need to be replaced um unfortunately a dent there which i'm gonna have to work i don't I have no idea how i'm even gonna try to get that out um so there's the couplers uh i've bought a couple tractors like this in the past that uh over time everyone knows over time the uh, ethanol gas uh just corrodes everything it touches so i'm going to show you something really quite corroded look at that just falling apart just coming out this is the gas uh, gauge and it uh, i mean you sh you can imagine this just stinks of varnish and uh decay it's really quite horrible i hate to, i shouldn't even really be putting back in there but i don't want anything else to get in there um there is a lot of gas still in this tractor and it it's very very you know broken down and smells horrible um but it is quite fortunate that they put so much gas in this tractor at the time if you only leave a little bit of gas in a tractor and let it sit for several years that gas is going to pretty much turn to dust and dirt uh, i've seen it on a couple tractors that i've collected or bought that have been sitting for a long time um, and i'm sure some of you encountered that as well and it just completely you know you got to replace all the fuel lines you got to replace everything even the fuel pump usually um, i'm hoping not to have to do that since the fuel is still all in this i'm hoping to take the tank off drain it out you know re uh rebuild the fuel system redo the the fuel system put a new battery in it and uh you know and go from there um so that is uh my 1988 john deere 316 with only 
250 original hours. Quite amazing, quite amazing. As it, as it stands, uh, a really impressive uh, find in, uh, in, in mid-Florida. Um, uh, another shot of the deck. So pretty much what my plans are for it um, is, uh, is to completely redo the deck. I'm going to completely strip down the deck to just nothing and uh, probably have it powder coated somewhere. I'm not much of a painter. Probably have it powder coated and then I'll redo, I can redo the spindles and all that myself and the bearings. Um, the tractor itself, I'm gonna leave completely unmolested. This tr the paint on this tractor is in beautiful, beautiful condition. It's the best I've ever seen on a 300 series like this at this, old, at this age that hasn't been restored. Um, so I'm going to leave it exactly how it is. I'm going to replace, obviously, a few odds and ends, the tire caps. Um, these bolts, this bolt and the one exactly like it on the other side, rust. And I'll tell you why. Uh, they are attaching the, uh, the, battery hold, uh, the battery tray to the tractor. So what happens is acid slowly leaks down out of the battery and onto the tray. And then it leaches out onto these bolts. So that's why these bolts rust and no, nothing else does. Um, so all that, that, you know, this here, that's rusted. Um, we'll see any, anything that is not bright and shiny and getting sort of corroded and rusty looking, I'm going to replace. Um, of course this is a 316 with just a, um, it's got manual steering, um, one hydraulic lever. Let's see. Um, give you one last look at the, the rear end. I think that's about it for for that. Okay, so um, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the tractor pretty much alone. I'm gonna do a complete tune up, change the fluids prob probably multiple times because they've been sitting, you know, spark plugs, all the, all that good stuff, um, points or whatever. I I think this tractor has points. I'm not sure. I can't, my '83 did, um, but that had the older engine. So uh, I'll do every single thing possible to make sure that this tractor is, uh, you know, uh, is up to up to snuff. Um, I have the original manual for the 316 when I purchased it. Uh, power flow manual, 30 inch tiller manual, the uh, mower manual, original manual from 1988. I guess it had a utility cart with it at one time. There's an implements and accessory uh, uh, brochure. So the last part of this video, uh, and I really, I wanted to kind of save it for the video. I kind of wanted it to be a surprise. I really didn't make it known on the title or anything like that. The last part of this video is how much I paid for this uh, 316 with only 250 hours. And that is a grand total of $250. That's right, I paid $250 for this tractor, a tiller, power flow, and the deck. Now I do have to say, uh, and it's it's quite regrettable, um, this tractor did not come with the mule drive. I guess it had been lost um, at some point. It didn't come with the mule drive and the uh, deck shields are missing off the deck, which is, you know, I can eBay both of those things. It's just unfortunate because the mule drive would be such a low hour uh, piece of equipment itself. Um, so, uh, and the deck shields, um, that's very typical. You see the deck shields taken off. Basically what happens is uh, they uh, collect a lot of dirt and water and grass clippings. So people take them off to clean the deck and then they just don't ever put them back on because it's easier to not have to keep unbolting them. Uh, the new design of the... Uh, I show you the new design is is much better. This early 2000s LT it has also has metal shields, not that great of a design. Um, this 42 inch deck has a plastic deck shield. It also it has like three bolts. It's kind of kind of a pain as well. The newer design on the Edge series uh, has one bolt, and uh, and then that entire assembly comes off, and it's a lot easier to clean. Now. The brand new Excel deck that's on this 570 has the best design I have seen to date. And uh, I think the engineers deserve a, uh, a kudos. It just flips up. It literally, it's spring activated. So you can just flip that up, spray it out, 
and you're good to go. So John Deere has come a long way in uh, metal deck shields that are bolted on, you know, four different uh, four different areas, and and are just really a pain to take off. So I'm gonna attach some photographs of uh, of the Facebook listing. That's where I purchased this through is uh, through Facebook. I usually do all my business through Craigslist. I uh, I recently started uh, looking on Facebook. And, uh, and, and this is obviously how I found this, which was uh, such a fortunate, fortunate thing. So um, uh, I'll go ahead and ta attach photos of the uh, listing from Facebook and my discussion with her just to prove. I mean, this, I paid $250 for this machine. Um, basically what happened, the uh, lady that had it, she said her husband had had it for the past two months. Um, and there is kind of a story to this. She said that... Uh, the gentleman they had purchased it from was the inventor of the hover-round wheelchair, which is an electric wheelchair for uh, elderly and disabled uh, individuals. So um, I guess he had, uh, he had he was quite a wealthy man, and I guess he had bought this originally and, uh, and then just let it sit, apparently. So uh, I don't know what happened if he... I'm not sure if he's still alive or if he passed away or, or whatever happened. So um, I think that accounts for the low hours. He just never used it. Um, so anyways, um, she didn't, you know, she didn't know too much about it. And I think that, you know, that's obviously how I got it for such a good deal. She really didn't know much. Um, so, okay. Well, uh, I just wanted to show you all that and, uh, thank you for, thank you for watching. Um, go ahead and leave all your comments on what you think I should do with, uh, with the 316. I really would like to keep it. I don't want to sell it like I did my 318. Um, I think that kind of machine only comes around once, you know, once every uh, several, several years. So to find a machine like that is really a rare occasion. Um, so I uh, will most likely keep it. I, as you can see, don't have a whole lot of room, so I'm going to have to find room or make room. So let me know what you think. Um, and uh, if you have any comments on any of the things I said, I'm, that's only my second 300 series, so I'm not super knowledgeable, I'll admit. Uh, so if you have any comments on uh, on the uh, information I provided or anything like that, I'd appreciate it. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you on the next one.